Welcome. This is the Fair Havens Kingdom Center, where the true gospel of kingdom wealth is preached and experienced. God bless you as you listen. Kingdom business, modern of 21st century kingdom business. It is always desire of true apostolic fathers to make sure that sons and daughters in the kingdom rise in the marketplace. Anyone who will give you a thought or people that believe in an ideology that poverty is a sign of humility to serve God, please don't believe them. Anyone who will tell you that if you are poor, then you can serve God very well, please don't believe them. It wasn't designed by God that his people should be poor. As a result of their poverty, then they will now serve God. If that was true, the Bible will not say I'm the one who takes the poor out of dunghill and bring him before princes so that they will sit and ink with the kings. So it's the desire of God to take us out of poverty and bring us to a place of prominence where we begin to negotiate in a position of strength, not a position of weakness with our contemporaries. Though in life we may start poor, but we are not permitted in life to end up in poverty. That's the reason why God opened up access way in the marketplace so that his people can go in there, find a way to rise out of their poverty and become a voice. But there are people who believe in school of thought that poverty is a sign that you will be humble when a man is poor. He will be humble. The rich is always proud. Uh, but it's not true. The poor are very wicked. If you meet a very poor person, some of them are very terribly wicked. If you have used a public transport in some part of Africa, and you, you are standing in Molu and then suddenly you match somebody who is poor. The way they will react to you. The way they will react, you will think you have spoiled their business worth of billions. So that will show you how the poor is and how the poor are being wired up. There is a mindset that the poor have. So it's never a way. It's never a way. It's never the concept of God in our life that we need to be poor in order for us to be great. Not at all. That's not God's desire for his people. Let's look at some few scriptures. Second, third John chapter 1. Let's start reading from verse 4. Every true apostolic father desire to see their offspring dismantle the cycle of poverty and rise to a place of greater harvest. First John chapter 3 from verse 1. Let's start reading from verse 1 before we get to 4. Third John the elder and to the beloved Gaius, whom I love in truth. You know, I love that verse 1. Sometimes when we read things like this, we don't even value it. That verse 1 says, the elder and to the beloved Gaius, whom I love in what? In truth. Not love in foolishness, love in truth. Love in what? Truth. Don't just love people because they are your friends. No, love them in truth. It must be a standard for which we love. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in how many things? All things. John is praying. He said, I pray that you prosper in all things. Be in health just as your soul prospers. If your soul is prospering and in other things you are not prospering, there will be a challenge. There will be what? A very great challenge. For I rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you, just as you walk in the truth. So people came and was giving you a report that these people are believers, they are walking in truth. He says, it's wonderful that you are walking in truth, but there is also a desire and my prayer for you. I want above all things that you prosper, even as your soul does what? Prosper it. So they must prosper. Not just knowing the truth, but if the truth does not make you to prosper, so what's the benefit of the truth? If information you assess in God's presence does not make you to prosper, what is the benefit of the information? The Bible says that the truth shall make us free. Making us free is not just only making us free in the area of bondage, but in every area of our life that we are in darkness, because that's the job of the truth. To come and reveal darkness that is locked up in every area of our life and bring us to a place of light. So, the scripture makes it so clear that it is the joy of apostolic fathers to find out that see that his children walk in what? Truth 
And then not just only walking in truth, but these people who are walking in truth, that they prosper in all things. In all what? Things. Put that last two for me again on the screen. I pray that you may prosper in all things. Do you know poverty can afflict sickness in our body? Poverty can afflict sickness in our body. Worry, anxiety, thinking where the next meal will come from. How do I pay my bills? Those things can rise up and become a stress to the body. Before you know it, the blood pressure will shoot up and things will go so wrong in the body. The Bible is saying that I want you to prosper in all things. In serving God, I want you to prosper. In business, I want you to prosper. Every area of your life, I want you to do what? Prosper. I'm trying to establish a foundation that God loves us to do what? Prosper. Because there is a misconception that people will believe their faith. Maybe Jesus did not want me to prosper in a foreign land. Let me take my faith. After all, there are people who are poor. Uh, let me just continue manage life. No, that's not the idea of God for us. Psalm 35 verse 27. Let's look at that scripture. It's one of the Psalms people used to go and fight war. But let's see what Jesus used, what, what David used in concluding that scripture. Psalm 35 verse 37. Let them shout for joy and be glad. Who favor my righteous cause? And let them say continuously, continually, sorry, let the Lord be magnified. Who has pleasure in what? In the prosperity of what? His servants. God has pleasure in your prosperity. If you look at Psalm 35 verse 1, it started with Lord fight against those who fight against. Put it on the script. Let me explain that scripture a little bit. Psalm 35 verse 1. He said, plead my cause, O Lord, with those who strive with me. Fight against those who fight against me. Verse 2, sir. Take hold of shield and buckler and stand up for my help. Next verse. Draw out your spear and stop those who pursue me. Say to my soul, I am what? Your salvation. Next verse. Let those be put to shame and brought to dishonor who seek after my life. Let those be turned back and brought to confusion who plot my heart. Let them be like sharp before the wind. And let the angel of the Lord chase them. Why are we doing this warfare? Let's continue. Let their way be dark and slippery. And let the angel of the Lord pursue them. Continue. For without cause they have hidden their net for me in a pit. Which they have done without cause for my life. Let destruction come upon him unexpectedly. And let his net that he has hidden catch himself. Into that very destruction let him fall. Next verse. My soul shall be joyful in the Lord. He shall rejoice in his salvation. All my bones shall say, Lord, who is like you, delivering the poor, and for him who is too strong for him? Yes, fierce witness. All my bones shall say, Lord, who is like you, delivering the poor from him who is too strong for him? Yes, the poor and the needy from him who plunders him. The poor and needy from him who does what? Plunders him. Yes, witness rise up and they ask me things that I do not know. They reward me evil for good to the sorrow of my soul. But as for me, when they were sick, when they were in problems, we reached out to them with love. My clothing was sackcloth. I humbled myself with fasting and my prayer will return to my own heart. I place a bowser though they were my friend or brother. I bow down heavily as one who mourns for his mother. Next verse. But in my adversity, they rejoice and gathered together. Attackers gathered against me and I did not know it. They tore at me and did not cease. Next verse. With the ungodly mockers at the feet, they gnashed at me with their teeth. Next verse. Lord, how long will you look on? Rescue me from their destruction, my precious life from their li from the lions. I will give you thanks in the great assembly. I will praise you among many people. Let them not rejoice over my over me who are wrongfully my enemies. Nor let them wink with the eyes who hate me without a cause. 
For they do not speak peace, but they divide the state for matters against the quiet ones in the land. They also open their mouth wide against me and say, Aha, aha, our eyes have seen it. This you have seen, O Lord, do not keep silent. O Lord, do not be far from me. Stir up yourself and awake to my vindication. To my cause, my God and my Lord. Vindicate me, O Lord, my God, according to your righteousness. And let them not rejoice over me. Next verse. Let them not say in their heart, Ah, so would have had it. Let them not say, we have swallowed them up. Verse 26. Let them be ashamed and be brought to Musa confusion. Who rejoice at my heart? Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor. Who exalt themselves against me? Then verse 27. Let them shout for joy and be glad. Who favors my righteous cause? And let them say continuously, Let the Lord be magnified. Who has pleasure in the prosperity of a servant? The reason why all this battle is going on from verse 1 to the says is for you to come to a place of divine establishment in prosperity. That's what that psalm was written. The reason why you are asking God to plead your cause to fight against those who fight against you is to clear them out of the way so that when you step into the place where God wants to place you to make impact in the marketplace, you will begin to find result without any hindrance. Are you following at all? These are the reason why you must have at the back of your mind that there must be good thought of God concerning you to bring you to a place of what? Prosperity. That's the desire of God. There is none of his children that he wants to end up in poverty. Somebody will say, but if this is true, why are there so much challenges in my life? Why are there so much challenges? Why are things breaking left, right, and center? Some things we call challenges are things that God wants to use to build us up. But when those challenges come, we don't respond the way we ought to respond, and God will just stare at us. Sometimes we mock God and we complain against God. When those challenges come, He will step out and watch you to do your things your own way. Genesis chapter 2, from verse 1. Let's see why God wants to model a man and bring him to a place of stature in the marketplace. Please, I want you to understand that there are more God wants to make give to us that we are not assessing. There are a lot of things that God truly desires to give to us, but we are not assessing them. The reason why we are not assessing them is because the man is not made. The man is not formed. The man is not established. I will try to explain it with Genesis chapter 2 for you to really see the reason why those things are where the way they are. Look at Genesis chapter 2 from verse 1. The heavens and the earth and the, all the hosts of them were what? Finished. If you can put that at the back of your mind, just say the marketplace and all the raw material that I need to enjoy or excel in the marketplace is already finished before we arrive here. Put that verse 1 again. The heavens, the earth, all the raw material that I need in order to excel in the marketplace, God have already finished it before we arrive here. All the money that you will need in life, all the stuff that will work for you in your company or the, the, the business you are doing. Everything about you in life, they are already finished before you arrive here. I just want you to understand that first. What I need in Malaysia to be great. What I need outside Malaysia to be great. They are not about to be started. They are finished what? Already. Are you following me at all? All I need, all I need in Malaysia to be great is already available before you arrived. The heaven, the earth, they are already finished. Not just the heaven and earth are finished, all the host of them. So everything that you need, because in the marketplace, you need some spiritual force in order to move you forward. 
Say all of them are what? Finished before we arrive here. Why am I still saying this very particular point? Because you need to understand it. If you don't understand it, you will, uh, going to the next verse will not help us. That all I need, there must be a shift in our mind, in our thinking pattern, in our ideology. Lord, I know that all I need to excel in this land is finished before I arrive. They are available. I may not see them, but that does not mean they are not available. That's the way to negotiate with God in strength, not in weakness. All I need, all that I will, I will, all the raw material that I need in order to excel in life, in destiny, they are available in God before I arrive. Not just only that they are available in the realm of the spirit, they are available here because the Bible was very particular. The heavens and the earth and all the hosts of heaven, the angels are part of the hosts of heaven. The powers that be that will propel you to a place of destiny, God said, I have already finished it before you came. So there is nothing that is lacking in God. But this finished project of God, do we know that God is only one person that will finish a project before he starts the project? I hope you know that. Let me repeat myself again. God is only God that we finish a project before he will start a project. For man, we start until we get to the place of finish. But in God, the projects are finished before those projects are started. That's why God will wake you up in a dream and give you a vision. Dreams, revelation, this is where you are going. So that project about your destiny is already finished. He just wants you to align so that the time you are starting the project is not when the project was done. You are just coming into a place of implementation of what God has already finished in time. Are you following me at all? Verse 2. On the seventh day, God ended his work. Which he had done. Are you following? Seven day he ended the work which he had done. Rested on the seventh day from all his work. Which he has what? Done. Just like I said. God is one of a man. Who will what? Finish a project before he will start. On the seventh day he everything. Every work. Everything that he is talking about. He has finished all of them. He has ended them. He has sorted them out. Are you following? Let's, let's look at the next verse. Then God blessed the seventh day, sanctified, because in it he rested from all his work, which he had what? Created and what? Made. Next verse. This is the history of heaven and the earth. When they were created in the third day, when they were created, in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the what? And the heaven. This is the history. God, give me verse 4 again. Verse 4. No, you are in chapter, in chapter 1 instead of chapter 2. Technology. <laughs> this is the history of heavens and the earth when they were created. Thank, welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. Is the history of the heaven and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God watched that world. The Lord God did what? Made. What did the Lord God do? Made the earth and what? Heavens. Next verse. Before any plant was in the earth and before any heads of the field had grown for the Lord has not caused it to rain on the earth. So there is a delay of rain on earth. There is a delay of what? Rain on earth. The Lord has not caused it to what? Rain on earth. Why? We are going to come back to read. Why is it that the Lord has not caused it to rain on the earth? 
and there was no man to take the ground. Second again, there was what? No man. To take the ground. Next verse, sir. But a mist went up from the earth and watered the whole face of the earth. Next verse. And the Lord God formed the man out of the dust. Watch this. Mist came out to water the whole face of the earth. Then the Lord God began a process of what? Forming a man. The Lord God formed the man of the dust of the ground. And then what did he do? He put upon that man bread in the nursery of that man and a bread of life and the man become a living what? Being. Next verse. The Lord God now planted a garden, call it a marketplace. And there he put the man that he has what? Formed. Remember Jeremiah 33 verse 2. Slip over to Jeremiah 33 verse 2. Let's connect these two scriptures together. We'll come back to Genesis chapter 2 verse 8. Jeremiah 33 verse 2. Thus says the Lord God who made it. There is a making of a man for marketplace. The Lord who formed it. There is a formation of a man for the marketplace. The Lord who did what? Establish it. There is establishment of a man in the marketplace. So there are three phases a man must go through if a man must be impactful in the marketplace. May a man must be made, a man must be formed, a man must be what? Established. Then if you go to Genesis, the Bible said that the man, the Lord God, caused mist to water the garden because there was no rain yet on earth because man is not yet what? ready. There was no man to till the ground. Say there was no man to till the ground. Can you respond a little bit strong? There was no man to till the ground. There are many opportunities available for us to assess in the marketplace. But until the man is ready, heaven will not respond. So I go back to Genesis chapter 2 verse 8. There are many opportunities available for us to assess in the marketplace that we are not assessing. The major challenge is man is not what? Ready. And in the wisdom of God, you can't push God to release you in a place where you are not qualified to enter. It won't happen. The man must be formed. The man must be made. The man must be formed. The man must be established. Then, access will be given to the man in the marketplace. Why is God particular about forming a man before he releases him in the marketplace? Why? Any man that is not tested, established, made, formed, and established, tested by God, if um, that man goes in the marketplace, he will fail God. Hear me again. God is not in a hurry to launch you into the marketplace. Before God launch you in the marketplace, God wants you to be what? Established, tested, tried, and proven before he will release you into the marketplace. On tested vessel, we fail God in the marketplace. Because when they get into the marketplace, they will feel the reason why they are there is for their own agenda. They will not have a mentality of kingdom agenda and advancement. If I use this word this way, you may feel bad, but it's true. The way you mature in God will determine how far God can push you into the things that are precious to him. man that have commanded great wealth on planet earth, it took time for God to process them. Okay. In God's world formula, profit must never come before process. Don't forget it as long as you live. 
in God's equation to bless you in the marketplace. Profit must never come forth before process. Everywhere in the scripture, where profit came first before process, God destroyed them. Eli was a man who was called into priesthood and God called him to oversee his people but he was interested him and his children were interested in the prophet before process that priesthood was shut down Gehazi was called you may say in the school of prophetic ministry where he was serving his master he was interested in the prophet instead of process within short period of time God shut him down Anywhere you see in the Bible that prophet went forward before process, he ended in error. In the Garden of Eden, where we are reading, God said, This is my formula for you to make impact in the marketplace. As I bring you in the garden, I will show you later. These are the principles you must follow. If you follow this principle, you go forward. When he got to the place, Satan came and began to negotiate with them. Forget about principle and process. Go straight to the prophet. They believed the prophet was better than the process. They hacked to the voice of the devil and they were shot out of the garden. So anywhere in the Bible where you see, both of them are P, but one P must go before the other. The important P is the process, not the prophet. Look, as young men and women, we are so desirous to prosper fast. But if you want to last in the marketplace, keep your eyes more on the process. Keep your eyes more on the what? The process. <laughs> eh, there is no company anywhere in the world eh, that promotes a man who don't understand process. No, let's read the Bible. There is no establishment anywhere in the world that will promote any man that does not understand what? Process. Pastor Bakari will put it this way. If there is no process, there will be not be any progress. If there is no what? Process, there will not be any what? Progress. Watch this. Thank God, majority of people here from Africa. A young man who just finished secondary school in those days and they are living in abject poverty. The father will call me and say, my son, we don't have resources to send you to university. Can you follow Pastor Kwame and go to Germany and stay? Learn the trade that he is doing. Stay with him for five or six years and then thereafter, they will release you so that you will now become and an entrepreneur on your own is called the process of apprentice. And then the person goes to Germany, stays with the person, stays there for the number of time, maybe five years, six years, seven years, whatever the number of time they stay. What is wrong with the person? All right. God is a stranger in Israel. <laughs> Are you following me? Let's not dis get distracted. A young man coming from a poor family. The father say, hey, go and stay with so-so and so, master. Learn the trade for five, six years. Dear after, when they release you to become somebody, and then you can start your own. Most people miss all out. By the time he landed from, maybe he lived in Nigeria, landed in Germany. And then, somebody comes to airport to pick him up. He's beginning to see double, four lanes, ten lanes, some things that he has not seen before. He said, wow! Maybe he drives and says, oh, this is Mercedes Benz. Wow, wow, wow. So this is how it is being built. Then the master will go to church on Sunday on Friday. He will remember some of the fellow guys in the neighborhood say, come, let's go and club. Started deviating. Started deviating. Then in a the place where the business is being done, 
This is what we do. Do this one. He said, okay, I'm tired. Gradually, started debating. <laughs> if he does not bend down, he will not bend down to watch and observe the process. Watch this. There is assumption of understanding of the process in the mind of people but until when they are independent on their own, they will understand that they don't have any process inside. Because life will reveal whether there is a, you are a processed man or unprocessed man. Hear this. All the time he was with the master. The master has grown capacity, established himself, has known every detail of the trade, one after the other. His Banking upon the established business of the master. The master will say, sell this one one, one dollar. And then the customers will come. How much is this one? He says it's five dollar. They will give him five dollar and then instead of him putting carbon pepper to write the, the receipt, he will remove the carbon pepper and write on top of the one that he will give the customer. One dollar. He will go. He will take the... the the four dollar put in the pocket and then find another similar receipt put on top write one dollar there so that when the master come and check eh? what is there is what one dollar four dollar is in the bag you are serving your master by weekend he will go to western union and do western union to africa to his people and the people say wow you are so fast you are so what fast within one month you are sending money home it's not like mr kk son uh, he has stayed there one year. He never sent the head Western Union at all to Nigeria. The family will be rejoicing if it is ungodly family. If I know why you want to use the word if. Are you following what I'm saying? So everybody is rejoicing that this guy is advancing, is advancing, and the cycle continues. As it's continuing, it will come a point when the master will settle him. Watch this. He's on his own. There may be two. The other is the one who is godly, following every principle, full of integrity. At the time of the settlement, the master will call him, maybe, maybe 5,000 pounds. In the name of Jesus, may you excel. The one who served well, receive 5,000. The one who did not serve well, no process, also receive what? 5,000. May you excel. May you excel. And both of them go. Suddenly, people begin to see the one who the family members were mocking in Africa begin to make progressive impact because why the other person is busy doing all kinds of things carrying women sleeping with prostitutes going to all the club that is in germany this other one was busy going to language school in germany every evening watch this and then the friend will say no why are you suffering yourself you don't need german language to excel just shop life shop what life. by the time the reality will be over or God has settled him, it's time for you to go and start on your own. He will think that this frivolous life he's living can sustain him. If he, out of the 5,000, he pays house rent, look for a place where he will start the business, it will be very clear. He will begin to see the vision of the day and vision of the night. Holy Ghost will begin to talk to him that, oh boy, I do not understand what is going on. But the one who was nobody, who was going to language school in the evening, mingling trying to get to know people can walk into any factory speak and communicate to them things begin to open up from them if there are no process there is no pro progress in life and then what the other family will begin to say i know this ogre is a wicked man he has done ritual with my son there is no ritual the only ritual that that was done against your son your son refused to go through process it wasn't ritual he refused to go through what process if there are no process there will not be any progress in life it may sound so hard god will never promote a man he's not true sure of it will not happen before you and i arrive here genesis chapter 2 verse 1 put it again for some of you came late you will blame it on rain but if you book your grab from 12 o'clock you will be here before one Look at this scripture. Thus the heaven and the earth and all the hosts of them were finished. 
everything you need to be a voice in the marketplace, they are already finished before you were born. Hear me again. What you and I need to be a voice in Malaysia, they were here before the plane that brought you here for the first time landed. What this my little boy, all that he needs to be great in life, before he was born this year, it was already available by God. There is no lack in God. The only problem God has refused to prove more men into his abundance because you have seen people who he promote into his abundance they abuse every resource that he put in their hands. If I ask a question, just a man, pay a tight, it's very difficult. Yet you are asking God, Lord, make me to be a little dangote. Are you okay? Simple foundation, basic. There is no process. There is no progress. You know the painful aspect of it? Heaven desired to give us rain. But yet, we are not assessing rain. What we are assessing is the mist. Let's read the scripture. Verse 2. On the seventh day, God ended his work. I told you when I was starting... God is only man. I know that we finish a project before he start a project. Man will start and finish. But God will do what? Finish before he start. That's why he keep on telling us, step out of your struggle. Enter into his rest. Because in his rest, you will find out that everything has been sorted out in glory. Are you following me? He rested on the seventh day from all his work. From what? All his work. Which he had done. Next verse. God bless the seven days sanctified because he rested from all the work which he has done. Which God has created and what? Made. Look at verse 4. This is the history of heaven and earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the what? Heavens. What happened? Next verse. Before any plant of the field was on the earth. Say before any plant. Can I hear your voice? Before any plant. Before any house and the field had grown, for the Lord God has not caused it. The Lord God has not caused it to rain. So it was a deliberate delay. Friends, there are sometimes you will think wicked uncle, occultic powers, generational problem is your problem. No, 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 no. Most of the time, sometimes it is frustration by divine order. God can frustrate you until he process you well. Can I say this in English again? God can frustrate you until he's sure that he has processed you well to a place where he's willing to release resources to you. Because he knows if he does not process you well, you will not manage the resources. First back to New Testament, God called three individuals. Give this one talent. Give this one talent. Give the other one talent. The one who collected one went and hid it on the ground and said, I know you to be a wicked master. You saw where you do not reap. And when God came, to, came, the day he came to reward them, he added double to those who received more. And look at the man, he said, you wicked what? Servant. The reason why he called you wicked servant, the resources we are giving to them to train so that they will learn the process, but he refused to learn the process. God called him what? Wicked servant. Go into the outer darkness. I want to appeal to us. There is a need of change of direction. That change of direction is to focus on the process, not on the progress. I know you will not like this one. Father, release one million dollars for me. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus. Oh, I, I love you Lord. I will use it for your own glory. Sounds like a good prayer, isn't it? But you know a better prayer. Father, show me a very good process through which I will be a blessing to your kingdom so that when resources come into your hand, I can use it for kingdom advancement. Lord, release ideas that come out resources to me. Let this idea flood into my heart. Let me receive them. I tell you, God will answer you speedily. That when you are asking him 
to just bring silver and gold. Because it's a silver and gold are mine. They are what? Mine. Cattle in a thousand hills. I know where they are. I just can speak about it. They will respond to you. God is interested in processing a man. Okay. He has not caused it to rain on the earth. So he delayed it. Watch this. If you get this to be a kingpin in the marketplace, it will be as easy as ABC. God can slow a man down. If I say this, you may not believe. Do you know God, for your sake, can slow me down until he saw that you are running in a speed where all of us can fly? You don't know? God can, for the sake of the church members, slow a pastor down until he saw that these people are establishing truth before he will release speed on him. And when a pastor do not know that God is the one behind the slowdown, he will go to maybe Ghana or Kaduna to look for Shams and Hamlet to speed the process. Oh, please, let me say this. Let me say this. I understand there is a place of divine aspiration in the realm of the spirit. But hear me. There are some things you do not have capacity to fast track, especially if God has pride breaks on it. You, you dare not. If you try it, you will move you out of the way. Please, I'm, I'm, I'm teaching from the depth of my spirit, not from my notes. I just want you to receive them. There are some things you will want to fast track in your life. You will come to me. Maybe your pastor or anybody. Lord, pray for me. Let this door open. The more we pray, the more the door shut down. Hey, anytime I see a situation like this, I pull away to ask question, Lord, is there something you are saying that we don't know? You know why? Imagine for a second. Lord, I must be in Nigeria this Christmas. Oh, Lord! To show the whole people that I am not the leftover in Malaysia. Help me, Lord, to go. Good prayer. But from the day, the more you pray the prayer, all the businesses, left, right, and center, nothing is coming. Every door closed. Then you will show up in destiny night. Man of God. You pray for other people and God hear them. I really want to travel this year. In the name of Jesus, travel. The remaining money you have in your, in your house, one problem comes, you spend it all. So there is no headway again. To travel again. Say, Pastor, what is wrong? You prayed again and the money that is left in my bank account, that one, the police people came to my house and they collected the money. If you come, I can say, praise God. He said, Pastor, are you okay? You are praising God. Police came to my house to take my money. You may not understand. But maybe God has seen. If this young man traveled to Africa, there are enemies waiting for him. They have prepared a bottle of poison he will drink for him. There is no way he will escape it. Let me dry off every water so that he will not go. But to you, God did not answer your prayer. The major problem is that there is a way man wants his prayer to be answered. They don't want God to answer the prayer the way he wants. Except you're a man of the spirit and God open your eyes and show you why he restrained you from that travel. Maybe people have already planned if you come, we'll kill him with God. Oh, the mother is showing, doing like this. His son is in Malaysia. His son is in Malaysia. Let's gang up against the person. God, say, let me slow my son down so that he will not travel. Some frustrations are frustrations from divine order. They are not from Satan. If you don't go through process, you can't become a prime minister. Or president joseph have to go to prison to learn the course of the kingdom so that he can become a voice in the land hey if joseph did not go to prison he will not see the cup bearer he will not have the opportunity for god to test him on the gift and talent he has given to him that he has ability to interpret dreams it was in the prison that that gift came to manifestation are you following what i'm saying god want to take us through process by the time we go through this process and come out, we are better. As of course, I think you may remember some few years ago in automobile industry, I think it happened in Germany as well. There was a recall of vehicle. There was a recall of what? Vehicle. Thousands in Europe and America, in Africa, whatever they give us, we take. Our government don't rise to speak for records. But what's this? Why was there a call? Somebody violated the process. 
Because every industry, there is quality control system. But somebody decided to jump to cut costs. In the process of cutting costs, the car start to kill people. And then the final things we are wrong. The government of the nation who have spoke, recall this vehicle. No, it cannot be in our market. And they begin to recall the car. To you, it is only in the world that cars are recalled. But in this Garden of Eden, a man was recalled out of the garden. A man was prepared, sent into the marketplace. Where you will be a voice. The day Adam violated process, God recalled him out of the garden. I replaced it with cherubim that anointed. There are many recalled men and women out of the marketplace. They are physical in the marketplace, but they are recalled. They can't make impact there because they are not in the garden. Are you following what I'm saying? There are a lot of recall going on on planet Earth that we are not aware of. If you do not receive anything today in our Kingdom Business School, I want you to know this. That God wants to make you. God wants to form you. God wants to fill you or establish you. Then you will come to a place where money will not be a struggle again. Give me verse. Give me verse. Six. But a mist went up from the earth. What are the whole face of the earth? Next verse. Sir. Then watch this verse. Can we read together verse seven? Everyone, one, two, three, go. Please go. Can we read that seven again together? Everyone want to go with our life in it. One, two, three, go, please. The man was what? Man of what? Dust. But by the time he finished with the man, the man become what? A living. Are you following what I'm saying? First of all, the hand of the Lord begin to form man. Are you following what I'm saying? When he finished forming a man, he put his breath upon it. That's what I said some few minutes ago. Instead of asking God, give me gold and silver. Ask God to give you inspiration and idea that command resources. There is no part of planet Earth that is barren. The planet Earth are filled with barren men and women without ideas. Watch this. Watch the man that he filled. What will happen when the man has filled the man, formed the man? Hey, God cannot fill a man he has not formed. Hear this. God cannot fill a man he has not what? Formed. If the hand of God cannot fill you, his breath cannot enter you. Hear this. If my hand cannot form you, my breath cannot. Imagine my son rise up one day and say, Daddy, I'm not taking orders for you. Then he pays his school fees. If you can't take my instruction, my money cannot go where you are. must form you and then the next thing he begins to feel you there is no one single man even if you come from a lowest level a man of the dust dust is the lowest level a man can be but God is saying if you can allow me to form you I can feel you that people who saw you as a dust will look few days few years that you're a living being not just ordinary dust anymore God can transit man from where they are to a place where they're supposed to be. It depends on how you make yourself available. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Next verse. The Lord planted a garden eastward in Edom. There he put the man he has already what? Formed. So God can look. God can relocate you except he form you. God cannot accelerate you except he does what? Form you. And out of the ground. The Lord made every tree to grow. Life was not meant to be struggle. It was meant to be easy. If a man go through process. Out of the ground. Somebody say out of the ground. Say out of my ground. Hey, talk to me. Out of my ground. God can cause trees to grow. I don't need to struggle. God can cause trees to grow. Do you understand what I'm saying? Say out of the ground. God cause made every tree not just ordinary tree trees that are pleasant to sight good for what food the tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and the tree of good and evil next verse sir. watch this when a man is already formed instead of you 
being sustained by irrigation, mist, low level supply, God will begin to cause river to come out of Garden of Eden to water the garden. And from there, it parted into four dimensions. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Have you noticed? The man in the marketplace, whether believer or unbeliever, are you hearing what I'm saying? Whether believer or unbeliever, when they go through process and the hand of God comes upon them and the river of God begins to rise within them, they may start in one line of business. Before you know it, they have chains of conglomerates all over the place because the river will keep flowing begin to reveal some ideas for them, strategies for them, from one company to the other, from one company to the other. That's why people who don't speak in tongues are buying over Africa. And people who are speaking in tongues are not doing anything. We observe us. The richest man in Africa is who? Dangote. Does not speak in tongues, but he speaks in tongues. Where is he speaking in tongues? That is an indictment to church. And the house the mountain of God shall be established on top of all mountains, all men shall flow through it. We are our stars in the mountains of the marketplace. So, what our fathers refused to do, you must rise to make sure that we get there. So that we don't repeat the same cycle of failure. Like what? Our fathers. When the river of God begins to rise in your heart, watch what will happen. Next verse, sir. The name of the first one is Pishon. It is the one who scared the whole land of Havila. He begins to reveal some deep resources that is in the ground. That's why the Bible says, Out of your belly shall flow rivers of what? Living water. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of what? Living waters. Did you get anything from KBS today? Say with me, I must be, God must make me, God must form me, God must establish me. Or God must fill me. Then all of God will be released to me. Can I hear your amen? Few things I want you to do within this week. Number one. Ask God to reveal to you kingdom approved businesses. That will take you to the next level of your life. Find God's approved kingdom based businesses. That can advance your life. You can do it carnally. Ask Holy Spirit to reveal to you. What he may reveal to Mr. A may be different from what he will reveal to Mr. B. Ask God to show you those details. Are you following what I'm saying? If you get what is kingdom oriented business, the ideas of heaven will be released towards those areas. Amen? Amen? Second one, in that business arena, be kingdom focus. Always remind him it's not your business. You are just there to manage. You are a custodian of that business so that his hand will be on it continuously. Hear me. Any day you take ownership of the business, God backs out. Number one thing I ask you to do, find kingdom-based business ideas or strategies that you can work upon. Number two, never you take ownership. Always say, Lord, it's not me. I'm just a steward. I'm just a steward. I'm just what? A steward. I see God as I'm renting those businesses. Are you following me? Number three, don't look for the running businesses today. Hear me well? Don't look for running businesses today. Oh, this one has met my friend, one billionaire. No, 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 no. It is your friend, not you. Ask Holy Ghost to show you your own. The field of another is not your field. It is in your field that God can accelerate you. Because what is popular today may be obsolete tomorrow. And what is obsolete today may be popular tomorrow. So let God be the one. That we do what? Guide you. I close with this thought. I close with this thought. Did you notice that God called a prophet? In a land where there is war. He said prophet. Buy property here. He said my prophet. Buy property here. When the prophet said. God don't you understand there is war here. <laughs> don't you understand there is war here. He said by tomorrow your relative is coming. They will bring a book. 
They will bring a property for you to buy. Buy! And the relative come as God said the next day. He signed the document. After some days, <laughs> the prophet went to God. Hey, Baba, I have obeyed what you said. But can't you see there is still war in Iraq? Can't you see Sambisa Forest? There is still Boko Haram is in Sambisa Forest. Hey, you know God can ask anybody here, say, go and buy land in Sambisa Forest. Majority of us will just say, <laughs> I know, I, I slept late last night. It's malaria. It's what? Malaria. Complete typhoid. It's health problem. It's health crisis. It can be gone. And then he walk in again and say, Hey, you familiar spirit, I rebuke you. Speak no more to me. Jesus become Holy Ghost. Familiar spirit. Because he's asking you to buy land in what? Sambisa Forest. Say, you, all oh, you demonic familiar spirit from, from Ghana, from Togo, I rebuke you. will not agree they are from Nigeria now. From Ghana, from Togo, from Cameroon. Out in Jesus' name. Because there is war in Sambisa Forest. But you may not know there are treasures in that Sambisa Forest that God will ask you to buy. And even the government of the nation may not be away. You go because they will sell sheep when there is war. Even one naira, they will agree to sell thousands of acres and you just buy. Go to the government of Borono State and then they prepare CFO and release to you. Few days along the line. NNPC will say, oh, they are doing to prospect oil within Shard and Shard Basin. Only for them to discover. That the deposit of gas in Sambisa Forest is far more beyond you can ever see across whole Africa. You will not be saying, ah, God, there are ways. Look, investment, when, when you go for, make you, form you, fill you, and the river of God begins to well up in you, the investment style you go through will be different from that of the world. Don't go for what is popular. Go for what is God. Don't go for what is popular. Go. For what is God. Follow us on our page and social media platforms for more messages at the Fairhaven's Kingdom Center. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you and God bless you.